everybody, it's Clarissa here. We are back in the limelight today and wait until you see who we've got as a guest. Not going to believe it, but anyway, we're going <laughs> to, we'll get to that in just a second. But while I remind you that, you know, all of the videos now, we can see in many different places, right? So before it was just YouTube. Now we've got Roku and Chromecast and Android TV. We've got Apple TV, Amazon Fire, and again, YouTube. You can go over also to ClarissaBurt.com and see all of the media there. We've got the podcast now going out on Stitcher, Spotify, Podbean, Pandora, Google, Apple, and of course, our good friends over at Inspired News Radio. We've got that happening. Also, do not forget to go over to ClarissaBurt.com because the magazine uh, is, uh, is uh, the digital magazine is over there. We've got Iris Apfel on this last cover for summer and wait until you see who we've got coming up for fall. Unbelievable stuff. And in fall, we've got this really great new technology coming out that we are going to be the very first in the entire world to have. Wait till you see what that's all about. It is the coolest thing, I think, on the planet. And I think it's going to really change. It's going to be a breakthrough for uh, digital advertising. So that's exciting, too. Um, all right, let's 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 bring on our guest. Um, uh, I'm just going to bring her on, and then I'm going to tell you about her. Because, you know, I usually try to go as much as I possibly can by memory. You know, just sort of, you know, put a few things in my head and there's no way because this bio just keeps going and going. <laughs> it's one of these kind of, you know, so that's not going to happen. I'm not going to be able to memorize that, but I am going to bring her on. There is Adriana Trigiani. Hello. Oh, there. There is her. Oh my God, so beautiful. Oh, uh, you could, I mean, I just can't believe the, uh, you know, your bio, if I were to try to, let me just so you're a New York Times bestseller, the author of 18 books, fiction and nonfiction. You've been published in over 38 different languages all around the world. Oh, may I have your autograph, please? She's an award-winning playwright, right, a television writer and producer and a filmmaker. And I know you know some of her films, so don't go away for that. She's going to tell us a lot more. I was looking at the Bridge uh, Stone Gap this morning. I was looking at uh, while I was doing the research and, oh, man. You talk about just wanting to laugh and all get you in the feels and get the tissues. It's really, really great. I want to talk to her about her uh, inspiration, where it comes from. Um, and I want to also talk to you, uh, Adriana, about being the co-founder of the Origin Project. We're going to get into all of it right now. Welcome to the show. So thrilled. Thank you. Joy. I'm so happy to be with you, Clarissa. My, what an how, honor for me. How can any one person do all of these things and like still stay sane. There's so much on your plate. Well, you know, it's not a dress rehearsal. That's how I look at life. And I, I'm one of those people, I, I just feel the ticking of the clock and I'm thinking, hey, you know, we got to get this work done. Lot to do. Lot yeah, to do in a very short time. And I'll we'll, we'll know too when um, I don't have to, well, I, you, know, you know, I've always had a lot of older people in my life, and I know how life goes, so I want to get it all in. Right. We have to get it all in. So, okay, I wanted to talk to you about your books. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, so the books. Now, mm -hmm. I, and I know I've got this, this, these banner things that, you know, are not the prettiest way to get, a, you know, something on, on screen. First of all, your covers are absolutely gorgeous. And when we start talking about the 1940s slash 50s and the big band era, you had me at hello. I think it is the most beautiful time of all in our post -war, post -war new look, you know, post-war the new look and on my covers, you'll know this as a oh. as model, Mary Jane Russell, uh, as as photographed by Louise Dahl Wolf is on many of my covers. All right, so there, the shoemaker's wife. That's, right. uh, that's a photograph by Louise Dahl Wolf. Oh. Uh, it's uh, and that's Mary Jane Russell, who I spoke with before she died. Oh, is that the most gorgeous cover on the planet? Wait a minute, doesn't stop here. Here's another one. That's, that's, not, that's not Mary Jane Russell, but that's a Louise Dahl Wolf. That is absolutely gorgeous. But this one. Boom. Yeah, Tony's way. Here's what's really interesting. That was a Vogue cover. And um, that's not Louise. That's not uh, Louise. Da it's not a Louise Dahl Wolf. I don't right. think. Right, and right. It's not um, Mary Jane Russell. To me, it looks like Loretta Young, but I can't prove it that. It does look like Loretta Young. You're absolutely right. The covers are absolutely gorgeous. Thank you. Do you? Get your, like, you know, I mean, I, I know you get the question all the time, but your your inspiration, is it coming from the way life is or the way you wish it would be? 
or it could be, or both? Hmm, what an interesting question. Um, maybe a little of both. Um, I just like to write stories that I think you would want to read. I'm always thinking of my reader right. and what will take her away. Right. And so what does normally take her away? Let's, let's, let's take a deeper drill into that. What you normally, or people, I know that people are, you know, when they're reading your uh, fiction, nonfiction, they do want to be taken away and they want to be taken to a place that dot, 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 fill in the blank. Well, often it's Italy. I mean, it's Italian and um, places that maybe they don't know about that are off the beaten track um, where your life can change. Because what happens in every single one of my books is that there's a life changing situation that happens and you, over the course of the book, the characters evolve. Yeah. So I look at them almost like biography in a way because I'm telling a life story. Um, but I, I was so influenced by my grandmothers and my mother that I, I, wanna, I, I wanna always write their hearts and souls as I observe them. Absolutely. Great. You know, were you, you know, I'm, I'm writing my family really. So were you exposed to Italy as a, as a young girl or were you, was your family? Well, all I, was young, um, I, I went, I did not study abroad. All, all my sisters did. I have four sisters that studied it in Italy. I did not because I was a theater major and I wanted right. to get a play produced on the main stage at St. Mary's in Notre Dame. So I didn't go. I'm still talking to my best friend about this. It was my roommate at St. Mary's. I'm like, we should have gone, you know? We should have gone. Then I, went, I, went, I went very soon after college, and then I go every year. Right. And each time there's something there's something new, because Italy is so magical, and it depends on where you are and what you're, what you're yeah. looking for. And then it depends yeah. on what you're not looking for, right? Italy can do it's that. So true. It's so true. And, you know, um, Clarissa, through the years, I've focused on different regions and towns and that, that I actually, you know, go to. And um, well, for me, I, I think that my heart is on the mountaintop in Scalpario. That's what I would say. So I really like to go there, yeah. And I like cold weather, shocker. And um, <laughs> also I love Capri and Sorrento. Yes. And up and down in Santa Margarita yeah. and Sestri Levante. I love it all, right? My new novel's on the Ligurian coast because I, I think that there's something magical about the Ligurian coast. Right. Yeah. And and you know, again, as I had said to you before, my 30 years in Italy, obviously, have have it, it really is. A, it's one of those kind of places that uh, it kind of rounds you out. There's an awful lot to know and an awful. I don't think that you know. Certainly, I wouldn't have spoken Italian had I sat in a, a college classroom for eight years the way I do wow. today. Or would I have had the art appreciation classes that could have ever gotten me anywhere close to? Now I don't know that much about art, but I know that I, you know, I was immersed in in, in, in art in Italy for those thirty years, and everywhere you go, it's a piece of art. So how can you not be inspired, right? And there's also I'm quite devoted to the Blessed Mother, and she's everywhere over there. She's painted on the sides of buildings. She's in fresco. She, you'll everywhere. go on a farm, you'll go in a field, and there'll be growing corn, and there she is. Absolutely, I'm sure you've been. You've been to the Vatican. Yes, of course. I know. Well, that's another really spectacular place that uh, I've, you know, had the great uh, pleasure to be, uh, you know, a, a guest at the Vatican a couple of different times. We spoke about that before the show. You met, you met the popes. Now, my family, my family has a very close connection to Pope John the Twenty Third. Okay. Nice. Because so let's compare popes. He, you want to compare? We're comparing he, popes. <laughs> well, he's the first peasant pope because Very the popes cool. prior to him, he went in in 1958, the popes prior to him were princes. They were royalty, Italian right. royalty. So exactly, exactly right. he was the first one that was a farmer's son. And wow. he, the my family, the Spadas and Skilpario were close to right. the Holly family at the foot of the right. mountain because my great grandfather ran the so that's only my only connection. I haven't had your audiences and all that. And it, it's beautiful. We'll get you one. We'll get you one. Um, so Very Valentine came out a year ago. That's another movie. Uh, it was a screen adaptation, uh, Very Valentine, and that came yep. out on Lifetime. You've got another movie coming out. Looks like 
pretty soon. And that yeah. is something called, it's a movie called Then Came You with Kathy Lee Gifford yeah. and uh, Craig Ferguson. I remember when Kathy Lee was talking about this a year and a half ago, maybe two years ago on the Today Show or, you know, Kathy Lee and Hoda talking about how excited she was. And then of course, you know, there were these, there were these snippets coming back through. They would show yeah, uh, yeah, on right. the show. It was very cool. So talk about that experience. What was Personal, that like out in Scotland? She wrote, it, she wrote it and she had seen Big Stone Gap, which you watched and she really loved Big Stone Gap. And she said, will you direct this? And I said, sure. So uh, she she's a force of nature in a way that's really interesting. She does everything on her own terms. She went over and scouted with um, Christine Gardner and then she, they, they came back with all these pictures of the places and that, that are in the movie. And, um, and then we got down to it and we got it made. And she acts in it and she's superb. And Craig Ferguson is absolutely hilarious and scrumptious in it. And Elizabeth right. Ford, Ford Kiernan, who is superb and phenomenal. Right. And uh, Felita Law. Right. So that's an October of this year release. Is that still on, on, uh, on target? And where are we going to see target. it? Well, they're right. figuring out they want to open in 500 theaters, but I don't know if it's going to be possible, Clarissa. Right. So then it'll go to yeah. video on demand. Okay. Well, you let us know and we'll get the word out for you. I mean, you know, we'll, we'll be absolutely thrilled to do that. I want to know more about the origin project and uh, because it's fascinating to me that you're helping uh, students in Appalachia, uh, with their writing programs. Tell us more about that. Well, I grew up in Appalachia. I grew up in a town called Big Stone, which you know, and um, they're the best people in the world. And I love them very much. Right. And my skill set is to write, right? So years ago, when I was an office temp on Wall Street, I met Nancy Bowmeyer Fisher. And she really became a philanthropist after she left Wall Street. Right. And so, and we stay close through the years, and she has a son, and, and you know, I'd always ask her advice and stuff. And well, she ended up, I, I had this idea that uh, to do an in classroom program, a writing program about origins and roots of Appalachian kids, because I feel like they're not taught how sacred their roots are. And, and perhaps that, and, and it, more than that, it's not that they're not taught it, when they get out in the world, they're made fun of for their accents. They're considered ignorant and whatever else you want to say. Right. And that could not be farther from the truth. And right. so we've sort of proved that it's not the truth. This is the sixth anthology written. Oh, wow. It's written by the kids. It's about to come out. Oh my God, look at the size of that book. Look at this. Okay. Crazy. Yeah. So I'm bad with numbers, but it's like, up to 1,500 kids now, right. and they are published authors by the end of the school year. And I kind of used, with Nancy, the Bank Street model, and then we got Linda Woodward involved, who's a retired teacher, and we kind of figured out how to, on the ground, I go in, teach with the teachers, we Skype, and then the big tasty thing about this is we bring in published authors that the kids in Appalachia would never have a chance to meet. So it's a year-round program in classroom. We hope eventually to make it part of the curriculum in Virginia. We're working right. on that. Right. But it most of these kids never own a book, Clarissa, and now yeah. they're writing. That's books. amazing. That's amazing. And not only um, are you, uh, uh, you said, you know, you're, you know, these, you're helping these kids. Uh, I forget what the exact connection was here, but you're also doing- I grew, show I know, I grew up there. there. I grew up right, there. Right, right, yes, right, right, right. But right. every week you're also doing a show on Facebook that, that uh, you know, where the, I guess the kids can watch too. We can all oh, watch. I'm no, look, I'm no Clarissa Bird, but I am. <laughs> I no, read you're, an Adriana, you're an Adriana Trigiani, so- I'm that whatever I am, right? I mean, yeah. I'm hot. So you're doing this fabulous show, bringing on weekly uh, authors from all over the world. And these are like huge names. Oh yeah, we get the biggies because because well, I've been doing it for two years, but then the pandemic hit, and Alexa Casavecchia, who is my, really my producer, she invents these putting this one with that one and that one with this one, and and then I have ideas about it too. Right, and, and then I just make sure I read the books. 
So yeah. I always have a lot of stuff I want, I'm desperate to know. Right. Because so many people are writers. Look, 25 years ago in the United States of America, maybe 100 books were self-published. Now 1.8 million a year are. So yep. people are writing. Yeah. They're writing. They so are. They're interested and they want to hear the process. Now, those of us who are lucky to be picked up by publishers uh, and are on bestseller lists, that's beautiful. Um, but it's about engaging because this is something I learned. When you read, you're there. You're actually there. So if I'm longing for something, I pick up a book and then I'm there. Well, this couldn't be better in a thing like a pandemic. Right. Or just everyday life. I'm inspired if I could spin this camera around, which I can't, I'll break it. But right. I live a life surrounded by books because yeah. I'm into it. Yeah, that's amazing. You know, I love that. I forget who it was that coined the phrase. I don't know if it was the New York Times or who. Uh, they said, you are like tirami tiramisu for the soul. And I went, oh, my God, that's perfect. I love <laughs> Tiramisu means pick me up. Right? Not only is it an Italian dessert, but it means pick me up in Italian. Right. Like and I thought, yeah. wow, that is just, that was really kind of right on, you know. How did you feel when you heard that you were being, you know, sort of like compared to a fabulous Italian dessert? I thought it was great. <laughs> I bet you did, because it is very good. It was great. I mean, you know, really, I'm grateful for any positive feedback. Sure. Listen, you're I mean, going to really try to get better as I do these. Yeah. And that's really my goal. Uh, here's a question I usually ask everybody when they come on, and it's it's always really funny. It's it's really a telling. Um, it's very telling, and, and and you can't say husbands, and you can't say kids. You can, but you can say anything else you want, and that is in all of the years with your grand success uh, that you've had. What would you say up to date has been your crowning moment? Mm. There's Just been so, so many. I'll, 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 let me think. I can only pick one, though. I can only pick one. When you kind of went, damn, yeah, I've really made it now. Now I know. Now I know that the hard work really was. This is why I was born, or whatever, you know. Clarissa, do you remember a show called The Waltons? <laughs> yes. John Boy, of course. Okay, like I was madly in love with John Boy, and <laughs> yeah, I it's so funny. I my favorite tell my first favorite show, and really as a kid where I fell in love with the form because I ended up writing some TV um, was the Waltons. It, it, and it was written by a man named Earl Hamner Jr. Who oddly enough, he's now no longer with us, but oddly enough had an Italian mother. Okay. And the name was Giannini. Okay. They spelled it with a Y on the end. Oh, interesting. Okay. Well, they were trying to blend in. His his mother's family was brought to America to make wine at Monticello for Thomas Jefferson. Oh, okay. Thomas Jefferson. Okay, so. Wow. I didn't know any of that when I was a kid. And I, as a grown-up, I learned it from him. But there, I host the Library of Virginia Awards every year. And they and we had a meeting, and I said, Earl Hamner, Earl Hamner. And everybody said, oh, my gosh, Earl Hamner. And I said, yes, we've got to honor him. And they all agreed and they thought it was great. And I said, and we have to get John Boy to give him the award. So that was a big night in my life because I'm with somebody whose work I loved and admired. Love that. Boy, I had the crush on and he looked cute too and his wife was beautiful, but he that was. was a really great night. That was a great night because it was, it was my childhood in Virginia. How hilarious. A show right. about the seven children in the Depression era mountains of Southwest Virginia, and then, then you know I'm one of seven. Absolutely, I'm going to throw up now the ticker. It's uh, www. Everybody, I the Bianna through Johnny for lots more information. You can get more information there. You can find out her social. You can find more about her show on Facebook every week. Uh, okay, one thing. Last question. One thing that you haven't done yet. That is, you know, that you 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 need to, you need to do. It's on the to do list. Hasn't been done yet. I knew that was going to happen because, as I said, you know, it looks like you pretty much have done it all. But you have, you know. Well, you know, Clarissa, you're going to relate to this. I I love to write and I love to direct. I like to, I love to be on a movie set. I love to be in charge and I love to make something beautiful. 
and make it better if I can. Right. Make it work if I can. Right. I love actors. I come from the theater. So there's a lot that I still have to do. You know, I I love the theater, so I want to do something in the theater. Okay. I love, I love movies, so I want to do more movies. Okay. Nothing in mind yet, or just kind no, of keep it out of mind. mind. Listen, I'm gonna. I will outlive. I will not. <laughs> the idea will outlive me. In, that, <laughs> in a weird way, it's sad, but it's true. It's true. That's how quick the 20 minutes went. I can't thank you enough for coming on because I've well, had a lot done? of fun. I'm like so sad. Uh, I know. It's we have to do this again, you know? We do, we do. We'll be friends for life, I can tell already. <laughs> Everybody, Adriana and Johnny, thanks so much for coming on. Don't go away. Oh, I'm gonna talk to you we'll after the right here. Don't worry. Sit right there, everybody. You have been listening to all the instructions. <laughs> You do. I, I, yeah, I've directed a few things in my day, too. Hmm, I wonder how this is going to work. Don't go away, everybody. We, uh, Adriana, you stay right there, everybody. We're going to see you next week. You stay, stay well, uh, take care, and don't forget to go live in the limelight. Bye. Thanks for watching this episode of In the Limelight TV, intelligent media for the savvy entrepreneur. Please consider liking, sharing, and subscribing to my channel on YouTube, and you can listen to the podcasts on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, Pandora, and Inspired News Radio. Go ahead over to InTheLimelightMedia.com to read our digital magazine, and don't forget to connect with me on social pretty much anywhere. Stay well until we meet again in the limelight.